somebody say, not today, Satan. Amen. Amen. Welcome, guys. Listen, I am so pumped up uh, to start this new sermon series uh, titled Timeless. Amen. Somebody say timeless. Timeless. Right. And so uh, we are uh, just about midway through the year already. I cannot believe that uh, that that. Wow. I mean, it's going to be Christmas before you know it. Right. How many of y'all like that time of the year? Because y'all like to receive gifts. That's why. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. (laughs) <laughs> and so something amazing happens in the month of May. Uh, does, can anybody guess what happened in the month of May? It's my birthday, Monique, my birthday. <laughs> and so we also get to celebrate the birthday of the Link Church. And so at the end of the month, we're going to do it like family. We're going to go to the park. We're going to have um, uh, some kickball. And then everything is better with tacos. Amen. Amen. Everything is better with tacos. And so we're going to play some kickball. And then the following day, we're going to have a family fun time right after the service here with Bounce House and food and all of that stuff. I've just gotten uh, to a season and a point in my life that I just want to connect with folks and I just want to be family. I realize that we are in a time right now where church is changing. Church is changing, right? And so uh, uh, we, there was a period of time where going to church was just enough, where you can go to church, you can go home, and, uh, and that was it, right? You checked the box, and, and that was the end of it. You could go to church for 20 years and not know diddly about the Bible, right? How many of y'all have been to church for a long, long time, right? I'm not going to ask you if you know anything about the Bible, because some folks really, they get to another place or go to a school of ministry or they're taught something, and they're like, I didn't even know that, right? And that really uh, has brought me to a place of saying, you know what? I just don't want to be church as usual. There's got to be an understanding that there will come a time where we cannot do this. That we cannot do this, right? And the only way that we will be able to continue to serve God is by gathering in places that no one knows where we're gathering at. It's happening in places all over the world right now. See, we're at a time right now, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not going to say that the devil sent all of this stuff, and I'm not going to say God sent this. I really don't know. I wasn't in the conversation when all of this happened. But I know what it is causing, and I want us to understand what worship is. And so that format of worship today Do that in your private time. Because here's the deal. If you don't worship at home, you ain't going to worship at church. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? If if worship is not a part of your every day, then when you come into this place, you're going to be like my old lawnmower. We're cranking it up right now. I got to cut the grass, which I do not like at all. But you you know how you got to prime it and pump it, and you got to hit the button three. How many of y'all, it says three times, but you do five? Yeah, I do five. One, two, three, four, five. And then all of a sudden, I crank it up. That's how we come to church. We really, really need, need people to prime and pump us before we really enter in the portion of corporately worshiping. And the Holy Spirit does not move unless there's unity in the house. And so look at your neighbor and tell them, you affect the worship in this house. Because if y'all just sitting there like a stiff board, there's no way that the supernatural could touch the natural and there's zero response. Right? And so we get to a place of saying, listen, when we can get into one accord and into a place of unity and worship, then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit begins to move some things. And this is not old school teaching. This is not being religious in any way. This is just the book. This, this, is, this allows us to understand the book. And so this month, timeless, I realized that we are at a place in our lives where we give so much effort to things that really don't matter much. We give so much of our focus to things that don't matter a whole lot. Even in the church world, we we sit on topics and we argue about topics that really have no basis on salvation. Am I talking all right so far? Right? We get to a place where we major in the minors. And we get to, 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 to 
uh, lose or a place of losing focus of what God is trying to do in our own lives. How many of you know that if you are focused about what God is doing in my life, you're, you're not focused on what God is doing in your life? And so if we could just say, okay, God, I need for you to tell me what you have in my life because I'm tired of being up in everybody else's business. See, here's the deal. Our life is like a big old story. In fact, our life is a bibliography and there's a book concerning all of our lives stored up in the library of heaven. How many of y'all knew that? So you can find that scripture in Psalms chapter 139 verse 16. It says this, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In other words, God had a vision of you before you stepped foot on this side of eternity. God had a, 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 a thought out plan for every single person in this place. How many of you can draw? How many of you know somebody that can draw? See, an artist does not start putting a pen or uh, uh, some color to a canvas until first they see what they're about to create. God, the master architect, he saw you, Samantha, uh, Samantha, before he even brought you into existence on this side of eternity. In fact, he wrote a book about you, all that he had uh, for you to do. He predestined you. I believe in predestination. In other words, God had a, per, a plan and a purpose for your life before you came into existence on this side of eternity. But, somebody say but, B-U-T, but. We can affect the timeline and the agenda of the heavens. We, our decision making has a cause and effect. And so we got this big old book. It's called Our Life. This is your, your uh, 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 book, your life book right here. It has all of the written pages in it. All of the storyline is already written out. Our prayer should be this, Tom. God, let me live my life according to the way that you wrote it out. God, let me not deviate to the left or to the right. God, I want what you said that I can have, what you created before I want to do. I need all of that God the way that you wrote it that's how I want it but our decision making affects it this is what Romans chapter 28 verses 20 of, of yeah verse 28 to 30 says this and we know that all things work together for to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew who did he, who did he foreknow all of us, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Who did he create in his image? All of us. See, this is just some wordplay. Some of us get so caught up and just kind of like, what is he talking about? I wonder if I'm one of them. No, listen, God created the heavens and the earth, Adam and Eve, and we are a part of all of that creation. We were created in his image, man, woman, created in his image, and he called it good. So he foreknew us, and he's working for us. And, and it says, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Who did he predestine? Who did he call? Whom he called, he also justified. Who did he justify? And, and then it says, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. Hmm. So there's a predestination in our life. He called us. He's justified us. How did he justify us? Because he brought Jesus down from a perfect heaven to an imperfect earth world to serve a people that didn't deserve it and brought grace into the mix and through that there's a justification because we cannot justify ourselves but here's the deal God did all of that he did his part 
And then now, we have to do our part. And we can mess up the timeline of God. No, let me take that back. You can't mess up the timeline of God. God has a timeline. You just mess up when you're going to get it. <laughs> you, you just mess up the course of it. Right? Listen, I, I don't believe me? God, this is what God, this is God's desire, right? He says, if I could trust you with a little, I'll give you, right? Does God want to give you much? But he's not going to give it to you if he can't trust you with it. Or, or, or how about, how about uh, uh, Adam and Eve? Here's the deal, right? As long as we're on the course of what God has called us to, God gave authority to Adam, right? To take dominion, to take authority, to name all of the animals. It was all his. He was not looking for Eve. Monique, this is so good. If y'all won't celebrate with me and get all excited, I'll get all excited all by myself. But what happens? See, Adam was doing the work of the father, right? And then the Bible says this, and God saw that it was not good for Adam to be alone. And then what did God do? He brought Eve out of the side of Adam, his womb. That's why she was named womb man, the womb of man. And as a result of God seeing that it was not good for him to be alone, he wasn't worried about all of that stuff. He was just doing what God had called him to do. He was, he was living out the book. He was doing the book. God, what's on page one? God, what's in the index? God, what do you have for me next? What is the storyline? God, what is the theme of today? He was doing what God had called them to do. He wasn't worried about whether he was alone or not. He wasn't alone. He had all the animals around him. <laughs> he was just doing the book. If we could just do the book in our life, if we could live according to the purpose and will of God. But what happens is this. When God is wanting to turn the page, we are not wanting to turn the page. We're like, God, can I just hang out here one more day? And so God turns the page and, 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 and we just want to turn it back. And so you get rid of the person who was no good up in your life. And all of a sudden you get lonely one night. <laughs> Jesus, like around 2 a.m. And God turned the page and said, he ain't no good for you. I already done told you. You're like, but I'm lonely, God. Am I preaching good? And so, and so we turn the page back. When God wants to turn the page, we wind up turning the page back. Or there's times where God is saying, it's not time to turn the page. And you're like, God, I see what you have for me. I need to just go, go ahead and get over there. And then what you do is you wind up ruining the next season. Why? Because you wasn't ready. Just because God has called you to something doesn't mean that you're ready for it. I bought some, you know, some pants that were a little smaller. You know, they're like a 32. I'm not there yet, you know. But God showed me a vision. We just haven't turned the page yet. But if I wore them, y'all probably be like, Pastor G got on some skinny jeans and he ain't skinny. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? So, so we got to get to a place where we're saying, God, if you're turning the page, I want to be in step. I want to leave it there. No matter how much I want to turn it back, I got to get to a place of understanding that God is working for my good, whether I want it or not, whether I'm ready for it or not. Listen, God has turned the page sometimes where I didn't feel like I was ready. He said, no, you're ready, son. And I've had to show up and say, God, I can't do this. i got to rest on your anointing. It's your anointing that can carry me through. Imagine that's all we did all the time anyway. God, I can't do it. It's your anointing that's going to carry me through. If I ever change up that prayer, somebody take this microphone from me and run me up out of this church because I don't need to be here no more. You do realize that I could just pastor this church based off of information and without anointing. Y'all do realize that, right? I can pastor this church with just reading the Bible and coming up with some good speeches. Some of y'all, if y'all never ran around the church today, it might be your first time that you run around church. See, God saw you and he saw me. And he breathed life 
into our lungs. He gave you life. Do you think that God brought you on this side of eternity for no purpose, for you to just go to work and then come to church every once in a while and, and just kind of all that? No, God has a purpose for every single one of you. Before he breathed in, into your nostrils, God had a plan. He said, prophet, <laughs> pastor, <laughs> musician. He breathed, he, as, he, as he was talking, as a matter of fact, the breath of what he called you to, that, when that just, that just gave you life, all of a sudden you were, you were able to awaken, not because you could do it off of your own ability, but because God spoke life into you and you were able to rise up. And listen, some of y'all do, uh, feel uneasy and some of you feel like you don't know what's next and you have this anxiety built up. Why? Because the breath that's on the inside of you from heaven doesn't allow you to feel easy it causes you to feel uncomfortable and when you are outside of the will of God you just feel like I don't know God what's going on I don't feel right do I need to go see the doctor I may need to see a counselor and all God is saying listen is my breath won't leave you alone if you could get into where I oh my if you could just get to where I need you to be if you could if you could get on the same page <laughs> Tim, how I'm doing? Am I doing good, Tim? What? I'm listen. God gave me this message, and it was it was. Listen, I get to hear it first, y'all. You do realize that, right? Have you ever heard the phrase "on the same page"? Let's get on the same page. That phrase developed off of a choir. Choirs singing together. And it will say, hey, we got to get on the same page so we could be singing the same uh, note, the same word. But I really believe that based off of this scripture, that phrase came alive when they started using it for choirs. But it was around much way, way before then. Because if there is a book in heaven with your name on it, all we got to do is get on the same page with God. If we could get on the same page with God... Wow. We wouldn't be on the same page with the devil. <laughs> so check this out, right? God, God has a, a, a book in heaven. I said that, all right? I said that already, right? I just want y'all to get that. I just want you to be clear. Because some of us are like, hey, man, you don't know my life. I've, I've been through so much in my life. And, and, and God don't need me. No, listen, God has a book. I don't care what you've been through. It doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. It doesn't matter how many times you failed. It really doesn't matter if you failed right before coming to church, right? God has a book with your name on it. And here's the awesome part. God wrote your book, and based off of your book, he was able to write the following generations. <laughs> Tell y'all, if y'all could just grab, up, grab a hold of this. In fact, the generations before you, they paved the way for us. They, listen, some of our family and, and the things that they have gone through, maybe you don't have the silver spoon in your mouth because the way that they live their life, and according to that, that then your life kind of, that's called the generational curses. All right, and so and so, this is what the Bible says about generations. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-three, verse two: One of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. Uh, illegitimate. Let me give you another word. This is the clean version. There are versions of the Bible that says uh, a bastard child. One that is born out of wedlock cannot enter into the assembly up to the 10th generation. Now, we are not at that place. Thank God for the grace. Somebody say, thank God for grace. When Jesus came down, he said, listen, these folks over here, we got to open up the door for the Jew and the Gentile, and God is our justifier, and no longer do we submit to that, but everybody has the opportunity at any point to get before God the Father, and at that moment, all you got to do is say, I believe it. God comes into your heart, and you enter into a relationship with God the Father through the Son. But scriptures like this go to remind me that God cares about generations. Let's go to another point. And this is, this is a good one. Somebody say a good one. 
This is what it says here. Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, it says, And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you. Also I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will give uh, and I will be their God. <laughs> wow. So if God and yourself establish a covenant then God is saying, I will enter into this covenant with you, and I will also inter enter into covenant with your generations that follow you. And I will give you the land, but I will continue to give them the land and be their God. See, the following generations, God cares about them to the point that if you do right, then he will continue in that bloodline and give to them based off of you just living by the book. Can you just live by the book? Why? Because it's not only a benefit to you, but it's also a benefit to who? To the generations to come. Your children. Let, let's do this. Let's do this. I, was, I practiced this at home, y'all. This is what it looks like, right? To the 10th generation. To your children and your children's children, your children's children, your children's children, your children's children, children's children, your children's children, your children's children, your children's your children's Children, can you imagine what that photo will look like of a family reunion? And God is saying, I will enter into a covenant with you. And based off of your covenant, that covenant will follow. And I will take care of the ones that will follow after you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to fret over it. Don't worry. I got your back because you did right. That was enough sowing that you will be able to reap. That you will be able to reap. based off of that covenant. Why? All you did was live by the book. It transcends all timelines. We are always so concerned with time. How many of y'all say this after you've been asked, how are you? Man, I'm just busy. <laughs> how many? I just got a lot going on. Man, I can't. How many of you said this, man? I just can't wait for Friday. <laughs> TGIF! Thirsty Thursday! Hump Wednesday! Saturdays, yo, no, that's my day. Don't, don't mess with me. Oh, Sunday, Sunday, that's family day. I don't, I don't mess with any of that. We are so concerned with trying to keep this order in our life, and our order is so much or so often backwards in comparison to what God is wanting to do for your life. You think you got it all figured out, don't you? We're so busy trying to keep the right people in and the wrong people out. How many of y'all... Oh, they ain't for my good. I, you look at them, oh no, they got a demon in them. I ain't messing with them. Oh no, I can't have them around because they look like they got some stuff going on in their life. Spraying Lysol. And... What if I told you that the wrong people are the ones that actually will be a part of propelling you instead of the ones that, are, that you would consider good for you? What if I told you that? Would you believe me? Would you believe me? <laughs> Finally, an honest person. The rest of y'all, can y'all come? Give me the all, lay hands on the liars. Because how many of you have been hurt, ha, ha, betrayed, lied to, stolen from, right? All of the wrong things. When you think of the wrong people, you're like, I don't, I don't want to continue to go through the mess of dealing with the wrong people in my life. I fought hard enough to get them out. I don't need anybody else. If you're going to disrupt my peace, you better go somewhere else with that. I'm in a season of my life where I'm just, I need peace.
That sound familiar? I'm just getting too old for this. I can't keep going through this mess. I... Peace. But here's the deal. Jesus needed a Judas. Jesus needed Judas. If we look at, at the scripture over on uh, Luke chapter 22, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss, and that allowed for the things to get kick-started for Jesus to accomplish the vision uh, that heaven had when he sent them down to this earth. But check this out. Here's the amazing part. If we look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 23, uh, Peter, one of the folks that were in the inner circle, tried to correct Jesus and told him, he tried to correct him when Jesus said, listen, I'm about to go to Jerusalem and I, I, I'm, I'm about to die. I'm go, I, I have a mission. The things that I was sent to do, I'm about to bring to fulfillment. And Jesus had to rebuke him. If he listened to, Ju uh, to Peter, he wouldn't have accomplished his vision. See, we all need Judas in our life. In fact, I would not be offended right now if you grabbed your phone and you wrote to so-and-so and say, thank you. <laughs> I won't be mad if you grab your phone right now and said, thank you. Thank you for lying to me. Thank you for cheating. Thank you for robbing from me. Thank you for talking about me. Thank you for stabbing me in the back. Because if it wasn't for you, I would have not stepped out on faith on something. If it, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have believed in myself the way that I do. If it wasn't for you, listen, I needed you to accomplish the vision of heaven for my life. You can thank, thank him later. I don't care. But thank him. And please tag me if you do it on social media. Everybody knows me as Pastor G, but I am Guillermo Rivera. See, we major in the minors. And we don't realize that we are on the timeline of heaven. And when God turns the page, we just got to realize that he's turning the page for a reason. You can't keep the people that God is trying to keep out of you. I have held myself back from going to next levels because I was trying to bring everybody with me. And my motto was this, if I eat, everybody eats. No, that is not how it works. There are some people that don't want to eat what's being served. God is trying to put filet mignon on the table and you just want to continue to eat some grits. I only said grits because I really don't like grits, so don't judge me. See, some people, I've tried to open the door for people that it was not their turn to do, to go to the next place or to, for the, uh, the page to be turned. And I tried and I tried and I tried. And you know what happened? I wound up getting myself out of the alignment of what God had for me. So no, if you eat, everybody eats. Because they may not want what God is serving. How do I know? Well, when you grow and then there's people that tell you, don't forget where you came from. And that's cool. You should remember where you came from. But here's the deal, right? Like when you turn in the page, you got to keep a bookmark where you are. You know why? Because turn the page so that you could go ahead and grab your testimony from back there. But you got to go back to where God wants you to be. And go ahead and pray for vision. Go ahead and pray for vision so that God can show you where you're going. But here's the deal. You can't live your life based off of where you're trying to go. You got to live your life based off of where you are. If God can trust you with what's in your hand, he'll give you the more. We're constantly trying to live above our pay grade. Constantly trying to do things that are above and beyond who we are. That's why we are a country and a people that are in debt. Uh, for every dollar you make, you spend a dollar twenty-five. We have more credit card debt. We're buying cars that we can't afford. Why? Because God showed you a vision of what he's trying to do for you you just want it now now this is not a financial seminar but uh, but I'm just letting y'all know that if we can just live where we are God can prepare you for where he's taking you to Come on. Come on. Come on. if he can just prepare you for where he's taking you to so you look back so that you can grab your testimony grab a hold of some wisdom 
But don't get stuck there. And you look forward so that you can get some vision, so that you can stay focused, so you can maintain some motivation. And it brings us to this scripture of Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. And it says this, not that I have already attained or already perfected. Anybody perfected this thing yet? If you have, can you write a book so I could buy it and read it? But I press on. Some of us just got to get to pressing on. See, depression is not going to solve anything. Anxiety is not going to solve anything. Consuming alcohol or drugs is not going to solve anything. Mr. or Mrs. or Miss such and such is not going to solve anything. Just press on. Just press on. And that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus has laid hold of me. Verse 13 says this, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, God is saying, listen, no, you don't have to have this thing all figured out. I already wrote a book. I wrote a book. Just walk it out and let me do my part. I said it through worship a little while ago. We bring our problems to God, but we bring our poise to the world. Those that have been here for a good little while, have you ever seen me grab this microphone and just be like, man, I'm really just going through it. I don't know if I'm going to make it another day. Have Has anybody ever... But when I grab this microphone, I come up here and regardless of what's going on in my life, I'm pushing forward. I'm not pushing forward for you. I'm not pushing forward for you. If you thought it was for you, my bad. (laughs) Sorry. It wasn't for you, it was for me. Because here's the deal. I might offend you one day and you might not be here anymore. You'll find somewhere else to go to. I've learned how this thing works. I might move to another place that's not on the agenda. Don't fret. Y'all get on social media. Pastor G is moving. No, I'm not, I'm not moving. Some of you may move. So I, I don't do this for you. I do this for me because God has called me to something. See, the problem of doing it for somebody else is this, that when they let you down, you feel like you've wasted your time. But when you do it for God. See, this is what I recently learned in regards to leadership. I kind of rate, you know, leadership on a scale of 1 to 10. And let's just say that I'm, my leadership style or leadership level is an 8 then I don't fret about the other two points. You know what I do? I borrow from God. <laughs> if you're a seven, don't worry about it. Just borrow from God. Carry the two. Carry the three. But here's the deal. Are you living according to the way that God wrote it? Stop majoring in the minors on things that matter so little. When I started doing what God called me to, I was delivered from being a people pleaser. 
See, when, when you're caught up in the people pleasing, you say things that you're really not going to do. It, it's just in a the moment, they call for it, and you got really excited. You, yeah, and no. <laughs> I'm delivered from that. Why? Because I, I know what God has called me to. I'm not, I'm not 100% confident that I could do it by myself. I, I really need Jesus. Anybody else need Jesus? I need Jesus in my waking up, in my lying down. I need his protection. I need his safety. I need the provision of heaven. I need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I need all of that. I need everything that's in the book from Genesis to Revelation. I need his salvation, his justification. I need to be protected in a way that only God can protect me. I need God. So I got to I got to live that way. Otherwise, we're just a bunch of lip service. Just a bunch of lip service. This is the perfect setup for one of two things to happen. Do I have your attention? This is a, a perfect setup for a revival, a, for a perfect time for the Antichrist to step on the scene. It's a perfect setup. Why? Because there are things that we do not because they work, but because it's out of compliance. We have become a compliant people. We're compliant to the things of this world, but we lack being compliant to what God has called us to. And for a long time, I was always thinking, like, God, begin to do all of these, these plays. God, there's folks with platforms. God, why, don't, why aren't they not stepping onto the scene? God, do something amazing and miraculous. And God said, listen, I do things on a grassroots level. I use the people that, that no one expected, and that's, that's where the spark is going to begin. And so if you feel insignificant, perfect. You are a prime candidate. <laughs> what does God have? on this page of your book. And do that. Do the last thing that God said to you. Because what God has called you to, God will bring it into fulfillment. So value it right now. Your life. Have you turned the pages back to a season past in your life? Because God is saying, okay, turn it. Come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back, come on back. I need you, I need you to come on back. Not at that place. Not at those people. I know that that was back there. I know that those, that situation back there was back there. I know that that job was back there. I know that the addiction, that was, that was back there. I need you to come on back because if you go back to that page, if you turn the page back, you're going to slip back into that addiction. You're going to slip back into choosing those type of individuals for your life. You're going to go back to that, to that depressive state. I need you to, I need you to go, go ahead and turn it to where we are. But if you have the pages forward, well, Pastor G, how do you know? Well, do you worry a lot? This is what the Bible says. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care for it, of itself. It has its own problems. So God is saying, listen, don't, don't go over there. Don't go. You ain't ready for that. You're not ready for that level. You're not ready for that season. You're not ready for that job. You are not ready for it. It's going to be yours. But I, I need for you to learn what is uh, in your present. Because if you get ahead of yourself, you'll step into that prematurely. Have we ever done anything prematurely? And the plan that we had did not work out as planned. And it doesn't mean that it wasn't for you. It's just you got a little too antsy. And God is saying, go ahead and turn, turn the page, turn the page back to the present. Turn it to the present. That, that's for you. I, I'm glad that you saw it. It's kind of like at Christmas time when you bumped into your Christmas gift and you wasn't supposed to see it yet. 
my kids, they saw a gift in the trunk, and they were like, Dad, yeah, after Christmas happened, he's like, Dad, I saw that uh, uh, way before you wrapped it and put it under the tree, but I acted like I didn't see it because I didn't want to ruin it, and he acted surprised. That's what we do with God. We, we see it, and, and, and we, just, we just get so antsy, but, but we got to do like my son did and act like you didn't even see it. And then when we get there, don't act surprised. Don't act surprised. Act like you've been there before. What do you mean, Pastor Jesus? Some of us be flaunting all the stuff that God, look at what God did. <laughs> you've been praying for provision, and all of a sudden provision steps onto the scene, and you act like you've never been, you, like it wasn't going to happen. Like, like, where did it come from? God did it. Can you act like you've been there before? Like you prayed and God responded? Like you had enough faith to open up your mouth, and heaven said, I'm going to do it because I see the level of faith upon their life. Can we just act like we've been here before? Because this is what happened. You, you post the blessing, and then next week, ah, oh, my life. Oh, Jesus. Sometimes I wonder why the Lord has blessed me with some great humor. Listen, I'm one of you. I'm one of you. I just happen to be on this side of the microphone right now, but I need Jesus every day of the week like every single one of you. And I've prayed for provision over my, over my life. I, in fact, I've prayed for my children, my, my, my kids. I have a 24-year-old, a 19-year-old. I have to pray for them, for them to make the right decisions. Sometimes they don't make the right decisions. i got to lament to God the Father and say, God, you take care of them because I don't know if I can do enough. I, 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 I have to give them to you because what, what I'm seeing with the natural eye is bringing me to a place where I just can't take it anymore. I've prayed those things. I've prayed to God, God, I need for you to hold this vehicle in place. Don't let it break down, God, because right now I cannot afford to go get another one. I've prayed at the car dealership. God, please let them give me the approval because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this vehicle and you know how much I need it. I've prayed, God, please allow them to approve the home loan. Listen, I'm one of you. I've prayed. God, allow me to get this job. Please, please. And then I say, not my will, yours be done. But I really want it, God. I'm one of you. I've prayed all of this stuff. I'm not preaching. I'm not saying something that I don't know. This, is, this has been my prayers. I'm, t I'm coming to you based off of what I have done. And I've only realized that, man, I've made a mess of it all. And so, God, I commit myself to you. And I pray that you allow me to live today according to the way that you wrote it. Every head bowed and every eye closed. God, we just honor you. We thank you, God, for your purpose and your will in our lives. What a journey, God. Some days seem good and other days don't feel so good. But God, our prayer today is that we would live according to the way that you wrote it good, bad, or indifferent. God, we don't have the mind of God. The word tells us we have the mind, of, the mind of Christ, but we don't have the mind of God. God, you alone know the decisions that you have made. God, you alone know why you have set some things in motion. God, you alone know how this thing is going to work out and end up, my God. Lord, let us not major in the minors. Can we just focus on being on the same page with the heavens? Listen, if you're in this place, you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your, of your life. If you're online and you're watching right now, you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Today, you can make a decision. You could just slip up your hand right where you are and say, you know what? Today, I, I need to make a decision. I've never confessed out of my mouth and believed in my heart that Jesus Christ was Lord. But today I want to do that. If that's you, just slip up your hand right where you are. Is there anyone in this place? I see that hand here in the front, man. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would say, I, I need to make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life? 
Maybe you're here and you say, man, I've messed this thing up bad. Like, I am not on the same page with God, but I want to be. If that's you and you're wanting to rededicate your life, tell us. See your hands. Thank you, gentlemen. See that hand. Thank you so much. Perhaps you're online and you're saying, you know what, I need salvation or I need rededication. Tell us so that we can connect with you. God, I pray over every single person that has raised their hand, God. Father, we have no power. We can call everybody to the front, lay hands, and make this a big old deal. But God, none of us can do what you can do. And so God, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that those that have raised their hand today, God, that you would embrace them the only way you know how, my God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that those that have committed themselves to salvation on today, that they will repeat these words, dear Jesus. Today, I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. I'm tired of doing it my way, God. Today, I do it your way. Forgive me of my sins. And thank you for the justification that your work only provides. Today, I consider myself a son or a daughter in your presence. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, amen. Can we give God, like, just a couple of seconds of just praise in this place? My prayer is that this message not only entered the gates of your ears, but also entered the gates of your heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we stand together and do our decree and declare? Here we go. I decree that I am a child of God and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I declare the spirit of God to manifest in my life daily and in the life of my loved ones. I declare lost souls will be found and saved with the help of God's people. I decree and declare I no longer live in fear, but I walk by might in Jesus' name. I cast out all substance abuse and dependencies. I depend on Christ alone. Anxiety, fear, stress, panic attacks, and pain is completely out of my life. I am healed of my past and all sicknesses. I come against the enemy's tactics. God has a plan and a purpose for my life. I decree and declare that I am blessed. My family shall be blessed. My finances are blessed. My bills are paid and I am current. All curses formed against me are broken. I am living in victory daily. I am a living testament, and through me, many shall come to Christ. I decree and declare my life back to God. I am a child of a living God. My plan and my purpose are revealed to me this day in Jesus' name.